Hi everybody. Now it's just going to be a, a short kind of general discussion on a subject which, you know, most of you will know anything about. <laughs> but the subject of... <laughs> Can I get away with it? The subject of genius. Now, I showed a record, in fact I played a record by Gong. And I answered a comment um, to someone about Gong being very unique and no one else really sounding like them. And it's true for a few bands through the 70s and late 60s, 70s, there's a lot of kind of uh, expression and a lot of new sounds and new kind of avenues and furrows being uh, drawn and Hawkwind, for example, a very unique sounding band. No one else sounded like them at all. You might say, oh, well, this band, this, they don't. No one else still sounds like them. You, you hear Hawkwind, that's Hawkwind. It's not, oh, is it Hawkwind or is it so-so, so-so, so-so. So they had a kind of genius, something amongst them. Now, I'm not saying that there's a genius. Dave Brock is a genius. But there's something unique about them. And they sustained that uniqueness. And sometimes we relate genius to uniqueness. I think a lot of the time we relate oh, genius to something we can't understand or something a bit beyond the norm. I mean, William Blake, for example, in the world of poetry, seen as a genius. Probably because we don't understand a flaming word he's going on about, you know. But David Allen, I think, is on that path. He's definitely a genius level. He's trying to express something, but I'm, I'm say trying. He's doing it in an effortless way, in a way. He's expressing something within him. He's creating worlds like Tolkien. He creates a world and has a genius there. A genius is like, it's, it's almost like a genesis. You're creating something. You're creating something which hasn't been done before, and you it's only you who's doing it. And some people can kind of capture it and get on board, but only one person really is shaping and moulding and making that happen. Now, initially, of course, David Allen was... He didn't write the stuff on the first couple of albums. He, it was called David Allen's Gone. He didn't write the material. But the, the cover and the words on the covers and the... The stuff that was being formulated, the band itself, was his kind of vision. And in time it took over, although his name was taken off the sleeve. And something developed and he managed to sustain that his entire life. That kind of genius for creativity and that spark of originality and uniqueness. He never lost it and he, he was definitely a genius. Now, there's, you might say borderline madness, you know. Um, people have said many times that Sid Barrett was a genius and on the first album, Pink Floyd album, you can hear a real unique character. There's something very different about the man, which they tried to uh, maintain without him on the, the albums following and didn't capture it because he had a unique quality again. Something within him which was crying out for more, something which was seeking and at the same time expressing as he sought whatever it was he was seeking. This album, because people say, oh, he's a drug casualty. And, you you know, you we, we relate sometimes genius with drugs and with alcohol. And, and sometimes that's true because they're looking for something and they're looking for a way to express more and they're looking for more out of life. Sid Barrett, in a way, was one of those characters. He was seeking for more. He needed more than the world kind of gave him. And a lot of people, why they got into drugs, especially if they're creative at this particular time, um, just honing in here. I mean, of course, this is a hugely generalised thing for many decades since. Um, and in life in general, people are seeking something. And so as a creative 
person he was seeking it. And you can hear the, the incredible genius of the man on his two albums. I mean, just on another planet, you know, there he, he's reading James Joyce and he's, he, he's a very literature based man and he needs to express himself that way. And so genius in those two characters particularly comes through words as well as music and expressing themselves in those ways. I'm only going to touch upon a few people here. David Bowie, of course, a very, very unique individual. I'm not going to say anything about him, really. I just want to show this record, which gets shown occasionally. It's for yellow vinyl stage. But we all know about Bowie and how he changed and how he, he had a genius for, for changing and almost expressing the world around him as he saw it. He had a genius for the zeitgeist, if you like, for, for being the one who could almost direct and show the future. You know, it's a, he had a real genius for creativity as well. There's something almost mysterious about his development and about the way he changed. And even up to the very end, there was something very, very almost... <laughs> awe-inspiring awe about the man. Even just in his regular interviews and stuff, there was something about the man which he had something more than most people. Now, people would say Frank Zappa was a genius. And I think, yes, I don't think you could argue that. I think you couldn't really refute it in any way. Um, I think he got bogged down, for me personally, he got bogged down in the kind of the puerile stuff. And a lot of his records, they have similar kind of marimba pieces or glockenspiel or string pieces, which actually almost sound the same, you know, various albums in the first few years. It wasn't until later when he started doing his own classical pieces and whatnot that you kind of, oh, you know, but even that had a similarity, but he was still, I mean, one of the greatest unsung guitarists of all time if you like just he should be up there in the top 20 guitar players of all time he had an again this incredible ability to do something unique and at a time of course in the 60s at a time when as i said earlier that kind of thing was happening it was just an explosion of creativity and and obviously you were restricted by your instruments and by what had gone before but you were still able to express and develop. Of course, later on with new instrumentation, with synthesizers and whatnot, new sounds and new geniuses appeared. But were there so many? I don't know. I think people had a genius for certain things. But of the true geniuses, I'm not, I don't know if there are that many over the last 10 or 20 years. Perhaps I'm probably just out of touch with it. And you're probably all going, well, what about so-and-so, 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 so-and-so. But the true geniuses, I've, I mean, the George Clintons had a genius for something. You know, is he a genius? I don't think so. But he had touched upon something, he created something quite unusual and just distinctive. And again, it's a whole world. So you could argue he's a, he is that kind of genius level. But there's a kind of quirk, again, there's a quirkiness and an unusual and something really quite different, you know, and everyone says Captain Beefheart was a genius. And he'd certainly had that quality about him. Again, I think in the end you could see it in the, the fact he was always trying to express something. As a child, he was a sculptor. And as he, uh, through the music... It's almost like he's sculpting the pieces of music and put, building them together at times. Just, he had a, an ear for words. He had a, a real kind of deep need to express his own genius. And of course, later on, it went into paint because of his illness and stuff. He couldn't really sustain the, the do, singing and the, uh, that performance, that level of performance. And of course he had his waving moments, but a lot of geniuses do. They come and go, they're up and down, they're exploring, they're looking for something new and different. Now, I just thought I'd show that particular record. I'm not going to go into huge detail here. You know, we all we all have heard this stuff before, said. I think the word genius is bandied around far too loosely nowadays, liberally. 
everyone's a genius but there are elements of genius in things now this album is Gene Clark no other I think this album has as a genius to it the creativity the sound the production the quality of it has a real he's, He's had achieved something on a higher plane with this record. Now, a couple of the tracks, you might argue, are just OK, they're OK. But the quality, and the, I'm going to say, I've said it before, it's like soaring spiritual quality, has a genius to it, a creativity to it. Now, you might argue that all creativity is springs from a genius. Like I said earlier, it's like a genesis. And you might look at this record and think, oh, you've gone too far. You cannot equate this with genius. Now, the people are going to say, what? I think to some degree, when you hear, I mean, Paul McCartney dreamt yesterday. Now, if you dream a song, if you dream music, I've done it myself sometimes. But if you dream something and you can make that into a reality, you can wake up and your subconscious and something within you has created something while you're asleep, I would argue that is from the, the level of a genius. Something within... No, you don't have to be able to read and write music or whatever to create or to have the level of genius. But there's something within McCartney which had a genius. I mean, you consider the records that they released and the songs, the albums, uh, Lennon and McCartney in particular, their writing was just exceptional at times and it was incredibly of another level. Now, of course, it was enhanced by uh, George Martin and all the rest of it. And there's all sorts of stories and arguments I could, you know, we could all talk about, we've heard a million times over. But I think there's an element of genius in when you're asleep. And it's like a gift. And that's what I think the level of genius is. Sometimes it's like a gift. It's not something that everybody has. But to be able to wake up and write yesterday from dreaming is genius level in my eyes i'm not saying everything he wrote because it wasn't and the same with all these artists not everything they did was of that of a standard or of a place which was a that kind of distinction now another artist in a way falling into the same area if you like is hendrix i mean what an incredible incredible guitar player a genius of the electric guitar unequaled before or since so unique to himself you know i mean if he was born 20 years later maybe he would have been more like the uh, malsteams of his world but there's just again from nowhere from within this man from this need to express this you know sitting in the bathroom because he loved the sound of the acoustics that's, I get it. I know what that feels like when there's that, those moments of just, this is what I need and this is what I want and this is what I need to express within me. And it doesn't have to be recorded and it doesn't, but you want it and you feel it at the time and you have it and it's, it's there with you. And, you know, you're almost like seeking those times. And this guy had it in spades. I would argue that the second album is actually almost just a cover version of this album. And I would say he touched upon great moments. I wouldn't say everything he did was brilliant. And I think, but I think he was always seeking it. And I think sometimes the drugs affected it, of course. Um, he's always able. You just have to watch the guy play. And you know it's from a place which most mortals cannot reach or cannot touch. But they can be touched by and be moved by like, wow, that guy is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And just finally, I mean, there are so many people you might say, but what about so-and-so, so, -and -so, so -and -so? I'm, not, I'm just touching on some of you. This video guy's gone on long enough. <clears throat> A 
Bob Dylan had a genius for words, for expressing something again about the time. I mean, his words were just unbelievable, really, for the time. And put in this kind of format. If he was just, if he was a poet, he would have been overlooked. But singing with a guitar in a folk kind of style, he touched upon something. And he had something. There is no doubt about it. The guy had something. I'm showing this as my signed copy. <laughs> it's been a while since I've brought it out, isn't it, guys? <laughs> yes, it's an original 60s signature. Um, just on another plane. Now, did he sustain it? No, not really. But I suppose, like, is it possible to sustain? I think he probably, in some respects, you could argue that he did sustain it intermittently because a lot of these artists over time did less, released less as they got older. And you could argue maybe they became weaker, their albums weren't as good, whatever. Maybe they didn't sustain genius. Maybe the genius had flown and gone. But did it? Is there something within them which is still inherently there? Is that still there? That ability still there, and occasionally you hear flashes of it in, in people. But I would argue, yes, I don't really like Bob Dylan. I, I really don't. I just sometimes I really I I get it. I like you know some of his songs is crazy. I cannot listen really to whole albums by him. I can't sit back and listen to three albums in a row of Bob Dylan. But when I'm in the mood for, it, I think, wow, this guy is absolutely incredible. But always had something that doesn't really touch me as much as it touches other people. But that doesn't mean to say the guy didn't have and doesn't have that element of genius. Now, you might have lots of other geniuses that come to mind, I'm sure, you know, amongst the jazz crew and whatnot. But I'm sure they'll say Coltrane was a genius and Miles Davis was a genius, and I'm sure. And I, I don't have enough by them. I've heard a lot by them, obviously. Um, but I don't want to be getting into that minefield. I do think that Davis, Miles Davis, had a genius. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. But anyway, that's it. I'll see you all later. See, just what do you think? Let's do some follow-up videos. Anyone else got any more geniuses they want to come up with? <laughs> I'll see you later.